Hello friends, so in this video I will be talking about callbacks, promises and async await. So all these concepts are related to each other and I will tell you in sequence. So initially when the JavaScript was invented we used to use callbacks, then came the promises and then came the async await. So reason why these technologies or the new concepts have come in is because of the simplicity. Using the callbacks there have been a lot of problems, there have been callbacks uh, something called as callback hell. So that is a big problem when we have a lot of dependencies like you have one task and then there is another task that depends on that task one say task two and then there is another task task three which depends on task two. So there is a dependency right task one task two and task three. So in that case what happens is callback hell happens. So the code structure doesn't look really good and it is very difficult to maintain such kind of code. And then uh, with the promises again, we used to have the, like we have to use the syntax like uh, dot then dot catch to avoid that uh, we invented the async await. So we will go one step at a time. We will start with the callbacks, uh, and I will show you one example, and we will convert the same example uh, using the promises, and then after that uh, we will convert the same example into async await as well. So that will give you clear idea of what these promises and async await are all about. So let's get started. Now I will explain uh, the callbacks uh, first of all. So in the callbacks uh, we have got these two tasks that we want to do say task 1 and task 2. So task 1 is adding two numbers and task 2 is squaring the result of the above. Now just assume that this task 1 is like a uh, input output operation or it can be like fetching data from the server. So in the real life you will find this kind of uh, scenarios but for the simplicity I have taken this example where we are just adding two numbers in the task 1 and in the task 2 what we want to do is that when the task 1 is finished we want to uh, get the output of that task 1 and then square that result. So for example if you add two numbers 1 and 2 then that will be result will be 3 and then square of that will be 9. So like that we want to do. So what we can do uh, using callbacks is that we have say two functions square and sum. Sum will basically uh, add the two numbers and then uh, after the sum is done we want to call the another function that is called as callback. So here you can see how I have written it sum 1 2 and then square. So what is happening here is that I want to do the sum of these two numbers and then invoke the callback which will square the result of these uh, numbers. Uh, the sum of this number. So here you can see sum is getting called and we are passing the reference to the square function. So here we are doing the sum and then we are printing the sum is c and then we are calling the function. So basically the square function will get called after the execution of sum. So let us run it. So you can see sum is 3 because we passed 1 and 2 and then square is 9. So this is as expected. Now what we are going to do is we are going to convert this callback based callback based function to promises. So let us see how we can do it. So if I go to the promises, I have got the same thing but in the promises. So square is square function is uh, uh, there but uh, the sum function is now changed. It is returning the promise. So to return a promise you can use this new promise syntax. So promise is a class and then we are creating an instance. Okay, so here they, uh, it takes the function as an argument. So there are uh, two parameters in that function resolve and reject. So here we will do all the processing. So for example, fetching data from the server or any operation that you want to do uh, that you can do here. And then so in this function body what we are doing is that uh, we are doing the sum and then we are either resolving or rejecting the promise. Resolving the promise means that uh, the operation was successful and rejecting means that uh, we faced some kind of issues. So for example, here I am just checking uh, that the num result is the positive number and then I am calling this resolve function. So resolve C that means the uh, this promise object that we have created will get that uh, output of the sum. When we call this sum which is a promise based function it is returning the promise and we are storing that promise object here and then we use the then and catch syntax. So then basically means that when this result is ready, when the promise is resolved, okay, we want to execute this code. So basically what is happening here is that uh, we are printing that uh, sum and then calling the square. So this is where the callback is uh, that 
the second task that you want to do is getting executed and then in the catch if there is any error occurs in the promise code then uh, we are going to print that uh, error message here so you can see the sync task uh, this statement got executed because it is synchronous code and promises are asynchronous so that's why this promise successful output is printed after uh, this this particular statement and then it printed the square as well so that is how you can use the promises now let us convert this code into uh, async await remember that in this promises we have to use this then catch this kind of syntax which is again uh, doesn't look uh, really good i mean uh, from the maintenance perspective it is uh, not looking good and also file reading uh, it doesn't look good so to solve these problems async await uh, was invented so let us convert this into async await now so uh, in, when we want to use the async await uh, we have we can use the uh, same code base like the functions are the same exactly same the only thing that we are doing now is that we are using the async function and then uh, using await so remember that await cannot be used at the top level so that's why we have wrapped this uh, code in the async function and immediately invoked that so this is where immediately invoked function expressions are very useful uh, so the only reason being that async await syntax can be used only when there is a function right so that's why we have created this function which is async and then await can be used inside that and then over there we are just calling this promise based function which is add so basically uh, what await does is that uh, it waits until the promise is resolved okay and then uh, the next stat uh, statement will be executed so it will come here and then it will print this one sum uh, is this thing and then it will call this square function and then it will print the square so this code looks really uh, like synchronous code but it is not synchronous code what is happening here is that uh, when this async function is getting invoked uh, it goes to this line and then as soon as it sees the await what happens is that it re returns from this function and then it uh, calculates or the executes the rest of the statement so this statement will get executed after this inside async function okay so inside async function this will get executed and then it will be printed and then console.log this sync task will be executed and after that uh, rest of the uh, console.log statements will be executed because they that come after the await so let us run this one and then see the output so you can see inside the sync function so what happened is that when we executed this code it went here and then as soon as it see that uh, await keyword what happens is that it comes out of this function and then uh, executes the rest of the synchronous code because it thinks that uh, since uh, await keyword is used this function must be using like uh, fetching some data from the server so that kind of uh, input output operation uh, will be using so that is like asynchronous code will be there in that function that's why it thinks that it is better to execute rest of the synchronous code and when that is done it comes back here and then execute rest of the statements so you can see sum is 3 and then square is 9 so that's how you can use these promises callbacks uh, sorry callbacks promises and async await so callbacks have been there since the beginning of javascript promises and async await these were recently added like uh, after 2015 so these are new additions to the javascript specification and as you can see uh, sync of it is the code looks much much better and cleaner so that is the reason they have invented this uh, sync of it uh, syntax uh, i think that's it if you have more questions on this uh, callbacks promises and async of it let me know through the comments thanks for watching